Alrighty, howdy neighbors and welcome back to A Pinch of Magic. Last time we had a food reviewer, or a cafe reviewer, of the stinky variety show up. And we showed him who was boss by using magic. Anyway, we continue. It's 9pm. Closing time draws near on, on this. My first day of running the cafe. I finished scribbling down orders under a pad of receipt paper. I ripped the page out and handed it over. So, three secret blends, one small and two grande. That'll be seven gold. He's been scowling like this ever since he finished his first cuff. Thankfully, he looks more mystified than anything else. For the first cup, he'd sat cell shocked for several minutes. It sprung up and demanded two more of the same drink in quick succession. When they were ready, Kiana and I huddled together, watching him discreetly over the tops of Roman lattes. He never took more than one swell sip at a time. Crossing his arms and quietly ruminating over the taste before going back for another sip. We lost kind of how many times he furrowed his brow. How many pictures he took, or how many notes he tapped on his phone. After half an hour, I thought he'd finally admitted defeat, but... Mikael! Seven gold? Right now, Mikael is clutching onto his gold, pouting comedically. He looks like a child, who doesn't want to give up his favorite marbles unless his parent agrees to trade him a cookie. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I almost feel sorry for him. No matter how hard he wrecks his brain, he's never going to figure out the secret. Wait, why do I feel guilty for cheating at coffee I did wrecking his co Oh. Why do I feel more guilty for cheating at coffee than I did wrecking his car? Oh right, yeah, here. Thanks, easy change. I don't get it. How? Tell me. It all finally... It's all finally too much for his pride, and he explodes. Slamming his head down the counter. How's the coffee that good? This place, this place has terrible reviews everywhere. It's a dead spot online, and there's no, there's no way the coffee could be this good. Wait, terrible reviews. He sees that I have no intention on answering him. Miguel clasps his head, defeated in size. He's still pounding like a little kid. Tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow. To make absolutely sure this wasn't a fluke. You're not writing my review until I know you're not cheating. So bring your A-game. Looking forward to it. Ugh. You can see the stops away to gather up his phone, and he moves out of earshot. A very apologetic looking Kiana takes his place. She leans in and whispers in my ear. It's like if you're right, he looks kind of upset. He'll get over it, but I have a feeling he might turn out to be quite useful. Has that done for Mikael? I wrote down her receipt and passed it on. Here you go. How are those lattes? Not salty enough. She puts her hand to her face. Cheeks pink with contentedness. Not at all, they were perfect. Even more so than your grandmother's. Your cup lattes leave me feeling completely refreshed. Being out of the sea for so long it sure must be tough, huh? Anytime you need to pick me up, you know where I am. Thank you. This is Mikael as Vicky's way back. Kiana puts her hand into her purse. She went for gold. She fumbled a little, like she's having trouble. I forgot. Maybe she doesn't know how human currency works yet. Before I could cover her, Mikael steps forward, trying to act chivalrous. No one to be flustered. I have more than enough for the both of us. Oh, it's fine, I think. Here, is this enough? She just set the entire cost of her purse onto the table. A whopping shiny mountain of gold. Full coins full of the counter on the floor. What the? Kiana. With eight gold, not eight hundred. Oh. That's well, okay. That's so much anyway, just take it. Here's to Mikael with the sweetest, innocent smile. He's like, oh, would you like me to pay for years, Mr. Mikael? No, it's. Mumbling something about how he had already paid. Mikael picks his jaw up with the ground and quietly sees himself out. This is nothing wrong. No, you didn't. Don't worry about him. Pause, thinking about when Mikael had let slip earlier. Kiana, this cafe. You have a bad reputation in Linsdale. Late into the night, I was staying absentmindedly into Baba's crystal ball with my head on the table. 
a fuzzy blanket around my shoulders and Hannibal in my lap. Fuck yeah. Papa's rabbit shaped letter is still hopping around the desk. Deftly dodging all of Hannibal's impish paw swipes. All around us, the dustpan and broom go about their nighttime cleaning. Sweet sweep. Got a sweet sweet sweep. So I guess I was thinking about it. Terrible reviews, that's what he said. Yana didn't seem to know anything about it, but then again, I doubt she'd pay attention to something like that. No reason not to just find out for myself what's for all. I slip my phone from my pocket, just a few keywords ahead in her. Sure enough, just a dozen of results. None of them good. About this, at least. Turns out Mikael had had been exaggerating after all. Dismal star ratings. Mentions of the crummy decor. Photographic evidence of bad service. There's even one that looks like a secret shot taken from under someone's armpit. No way. I was just playing to sleep in this one at the counter. Just not even trying to hide it. All the public reviews, at least, seem to have been written from the point of view of outsiders. But that doesn't comfort me much. It only means that the Lindsdale residents still care enough about Baba as a friend to not out her online. Let me guess, all the ratings go back. Yep, three years. I was so subtly back to the end of my last summer in Lindsdale. Suddenly I feel me irked all over again. I grab a pillow and hurl it at the general direction of the bookcase. Several old ledgers come tumbling down and clatter to the ground. Honestly, Baba, you're a powerful witch. If you didn't want to run a cafe in the first place, why didn't you just do literally anything else? This is exactly why Dad's always worried about you. After screaming us in my frustration into the void, I hold myself over to the tiny pile of books and start gathering them up. Hannibal trots near, stepping all over the ledgers. It curls up on them for a snooze. So as helpful as a sixth toe. What about you? Didn't you think to mention that tidbit, did you? The truth is, even if her heart had never really been in the cafe, I know exactly why Bob was just stay in Lindsdale all these years. Once she had laughed and told me that it was because she could lie in the sand in a bikini, drink coconut juice every day, but really. It's because of all the shirtless surfers, wasn't it? I forget the last of the ledgers, shaking Hannibal off the cover. But I stop when I realize it's this year's edition. Something in me holds back from returning it to the shelf before taking a peek inside feeling. Or more like a terrible witch's intuition that Baba had one more bony skeleton in the closet, waiting for me to discover it. For escape, the bad reviews, the empty pantry, the shifty locals, even the brand new tablet. All the clues are alluring to suggest one very damning picture. I thumb through the first few pages and... My face grows ashen. <laughs> I knew it. She's totally broke. It's almost as if I could feel the skeleton of fate springing from the darkness of the proverbial closet to put its hands around my neck. But that's not all. At my feet, the tiny paper rabbit bounds up, cruelly announcing, with a cute tilt of its head, as one more message for me. It levitates up and unfolds itself in the air, stopping at eye level. The space at the very bottom of the letter is slowly stained with ink. A second postscript that had been hidden until this exact moment. Iris, PBS, that's right, I'm broke. Don't know how that happened, really. Be a dear and sort something out before I have to file for bankruptcy. I believe in you. Is that Hannibal? Handles the cutie pie. At the back of dawn, the alarm goes off. My eyes step open and I launch myself out of bed. I was burying a sleeping Hannibal in the duvet I shake off. After a brisk roll on the spot, I slap my face a few times until I'm absolutely fully awake, ready to deal with this nightmare situation. Alright, action plan for today. Step one, get dressed. Do the wardrobe door open, throwing whatever I touch first onto my body. 
Being fashion conscious isn't going to make a difference today. Okay, okay, step two. Don't think about how much pain you're going to inflict on Baba when she shows her face. No plotting, no curses, no hexes, nothing. Focus. Change about customers, cash, and coffee, nothing else. Where's the cash? Into the bedroom behind and hurry down the corridor toward the kitchen. Snapping life into the closed curtains and air conditioner with my fingers as I go. Cool air and sunlight flood up the room as I step outside for the sign. The sun set to open. I pause briefly to place a kind hand on the warm cafe wall and take in the crisp, briny morning. Morning, coffee, con curiosities. It's a beautiful day. Step three, save this place, save my home. Tell me, because I'm dying to know. The bricks have her talk back. I turn to see him grinning mysteriously. Clearly in a better mood than I expected today. The bare skin peeking out above his t-shirt is already glistening a little from the tropical morning heat. You look. It's a cute, it's a cute, it's a cute. Sweaty. Do you like sweaty? He throws his head back, laughing at my reaction. We're taking a few steps closer. We're just teasing. Mostly. Listen, I did something last night over at the, um, well, quite honestly, very subpar hotel I stayed in. The guys need repairs. It looks like I'll be stuck here for a while, you see. So, I'm not here for a fight. But so long as I'm here, I'll take another cup of the special house blender yours. Every day. For research purposes only. The image of the dusty old pile of ledgers in Baba's secret room flashes up in my mind. The red ink scrolled across their pages, the zeros backing every number. Suddenly, I'm feeling more amenable to keeping Mikael around as much as possible. I'll never figure out the recipe for the blend, but you spend 20 gold a day, at least, for as long as you're here. Maybe I can agree to let you in on the secret. So a smile spreads across his face. Fine. Well, come in then. You're darkening my doorstep. Yeah, I feel the last little at that. Charming. Don't I even get a hello. I receive hospitality for customers I actually like. At the end of his second grande sized cup, Miguel composes himself. Then plates his fingers together and rests his arms on the counter. Hmm. It's possible. I'm going to kill you to exercise humility for two seconds and just admit it's the best coffee you've ever tasted. That the shock of the first dozen sifts, and the feeling of being put on the backside of worn off. It seems like Mikael's able to at least pretend to be critical of the taste. Well, I suppose there's something to be said for the magic gradually losing its potency. The more it's ingested. Nothing I can do about that. Don't lie to me. What's that? Mikael tilts his chin toward the small signboard and chalk sticks I found yesterday. Set the hatchbox. Which are now laying on the countertop, waiting to be transformed into an advertising masterpiece. Coffee curiosities scrolled across the top in multicolored chalky block letters, along with cascade, cascading list of some of the more attractive items on the menu. I wrote the wording late last night, but the sign is still most definitely missing some most needed pizzazz. Oh that, it's step one of my grand marketing master plan. <laughs> so that's your best attempt at marketing. I bet your first idea was a train wreck. How about you let the clear expert here give you some tips, and in return you give me that recipe. Oh gee, how about no? This is opening his mouth again. The bell at the front door jingles, cutting Mikael's needling short. Moments later, Kiana shyly peers inside. Oh hey, morning. Good morning, Iris. Ah, and Mr. Mikael, good morning to you too. Kiana takes a seat beside Mikael, and while I start to mix up her kelp latte, she spots the signboard and pastel chalks laying on her side. Her eyes immediately light up. Ooh, making a cuisine menu bard? <clears throat> Cuisine menu board, Kiana. And yep, some drawings and teacups are cute animals, and they'll be ready to go outside. Can I help with the pictures? Sure, I go ahead, knock yourself out. We'll be okay, right? 
And her drawings must have improved, at least a little bit, right? It's a pretty lousy interpretation of Penguin. Penguin? Oh no. That's the tuna with the top hat. Um. Alright, now it's definitely a giraffe, right? Actually, it's an oarfish. Um. Pelican? This one is a seahorse. At least they're all sea themed. By now, the board is all smudged with chalk residue. There's nothing to be done but erase everything and start over. Please put a hand on Kiana's saggy shoulder before she could do any more good intention damage. Don't worry, Kiana. If you want help with marketing, you can help me with something else, okay? Okay. Why are you doing this? This cafe in a lot of trouble. I've been delicately wiping the board clean with a wet cloth. Kiana's come to me in my tracks. Since the moment I woke up this morning, I've been putting all on an energetic front, deliberately avoiding negative thoughts to trick even myself into believing I could do this alone. I fully am floundering. I don't want to lie to Kiana. So, despite Mikael snooping, BDI is present. I've had to come clean. Well, actually. After openly divulging the situation, in the alarming state of the ledgers I'd found last night before, Mikael and Kiana both sit quiet and pensive for a minute. Surprisingly, Mikael is the one to break the silence. Unsurprisingly, he goes straight back to the judgmental jabbing. Well, well, well. I may get some juicy tidbits for my blog yet. He leans back, shrugging his shoulders in a smug, exaggerated way. I mean, really, what did you expect? The place is practically falling apart. I begrudgingly cast my eyes over the room, unable to deny it. I guess. And there are earthquake level cracks in the floor. I know. The owner has a nasty habit of being mean to 50% of their paying customers. Do you take pleasure from being equal parts correct and infuriating? Always. Just when I expect him to follow up with yet more insults, Mikael's face grows uncharacteristically serious. Now, just because coffee is actually somewhat decent, I'll level with you. If you want to dig yourself out of this mess, there's only one tool that's going to serve you best as shovel. He slips his phone out of his pocket and holds it up to my face as evidence. Three words. Social. Media. Campaign. You need money. The only way to guarantee that is to drag customers in on a wave. New people. New city. People willing to spend. Outsiders who will flock to this place for the authentic hook after you spruce it up a little. Because let's face it, nobody in this town is willing to come here. Drop Linsdale like you, like they've dropped you. You don't need them. What you need is fresh blood and aggressive strategy. Luckily for you, I'm feeling unusually sympathetic. So I'll drive, I'll extend an olive branch just this once and help you make that happen. Fuck yeah, Mikael. The bulk of his speech wrapped up, Mikael leans back with his arms behind his head, a small smile playing at the ends of his mouth. Well, it's not like you'd stand a chance using this method without me. Looks like I'll have to agree to be your knight in shining armor just this once. Well, um... I think you're wrong. Not so about Kiana, realizing she looks genuinely a little hurt by Mikael's words. This day was filled with good, kind people. Maybe, maybe they stopped coming to Coffee Curiosities because Iris' grandmother didn't run the cafe very well. But they really are good. We shouldn't hold it against them. I'm sure they would come back if we try to reach... Is that the right word? Out to them. Yana, please don't give up on Linsdale yet, Iris. If you could show the locals that it's a worthwhile place to come, that the food and drinks are tasty and the service is good, the cafe will survive, right? I'm sure the residents of Linsdale will come if you ask them, so I'll help you. I look at the two of them in front of me, a little astonished by their arguments. They're both actually making a great deal of sense. But whoever's approach I decide to follow probably means we'll be spending a lot of time together from now on. In that case, I guess I'll...
can't believe I'm even considering this, but Big I.O. might actually have the best point. I may not like it, but Cafe Curiosity, Coffee Curiosities is pretty fast. I like on people, on the people of Glensdale won't be enough. Big I.O. knows social media like the back of his hand. I can't deny that with his knowledge, he could be my most useful ally. Alright, Mikael. Come by the shop tomorrow. Alright then. Glad to see you making the only prof the only professional decision. I'm sorry, Kiana. The rest of the day, Kiana and Mikael stay at the cafe, each offering advice of their own perspectives. Not a single other customer comes to order. If you want some glad. Planning takes priority. And before we know it, our discussion has stretched well into the afternoon and beyond, till the sunset calls an end to our little council. Night rolls in, I say goodbye to a sleepy Kiana and Mikael. Close up and decide to catch an early night myself. I'm going to need all the rest I can to get prepared for the toil ahead. My head is the pillow, my eyes immediately grow heavy. I'm just enough aware. I, I've just enough awareness left in my brain to wonder how well my new partnership of mine is really going to work out before I slip off into a troubled sleep. Hello, Coffee Curiosities. I get to work right away, nervous but excited for the humongous task thrust upon my plate. It's really the first day, huh? Whoever made the right decision with Mikael. Although working together, I'm sure he won't be as annoying. Knock knock. Hmm? Guess not everyone knows about the renovations yet. I'll let them know. I quickly wave my hands to stop the cleaning spell. Smiling when the broom and dustpan politely lay themselves down. After wiping off my hands, I make my way to the door and kick it open. Excuse me, we're closed. Oh! What do you think you're doing? Why did you bring a scooter inside the shop? Too small for a parking space, right? It's too big to be at a shop. You just roll your eyes. I think the first part of the renovation should be a terrible customer service. Maybe I did make a mistake. If you're gonna be here so early, then make yourself useful. How about we get started already before I throw you out? Yeah, yeah, I heard that one before. I'm sure. Okay, I'll just into the shop, peering around uninterestingly before pulling out his phone. I guess I shouldn't assume he's doing something nefarious. Well then, looks in an olive branch. What are you up to with that? I'm just taking some before photos for marketing. Or for reference in case you break something. Don't you mean we? Okay, I'll huff and puts his phone on the counter, turning it off. Shocking. God, you remember my ex. What in the world are you going on about now? Okay, I'll laughs and sits in one of the dining chairs, propping his feet up on the table. Don't make it weird. I'm just saying you're really focused on how I use my phone. I'm making it weird? I think anybody would would be using it constantly. We're co-workers now, remember? Uh-huh. Fine, first things first. These shoddy chairs and tables need to glow up. They creak. That's not a plan. Your disgusting shoes are on them. Of course they'd creak. The point of me thinks this isn't the first his first time putting his feet where they shouldn't be. I was told that you think your shoes I was told you think my shoes are disgusting. I get a new pair, like, every week. I stop over, but he removes his feet before I do it for him. Anyway, it's time to get to work. I sigh. Yeah, it is. Look around the shop, I know where I've... I should have where to even start. The new guy also really pointed out. There really are a lot of things to fix. You certainly can't keep the cafe closed too long when it's in so much debt. Hey. Hmm? The guy also has passed me at the menu I left on the counter. Can I see that? Sure. I'm not sure why Mikael looks so serious for once, but I humor him. There. He takes the menu and hums as he looks it over. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hmm? This is where we start and end. The menu. He smirks, and I do not like it. Probably have no idea where to start, right? 
Well, answer this. What's the most important part of running a cafe? Food and drinks are good, it doesn't matter. It's making sure everything tastes good, of course. Because if your product is satisfying, nothing else matters. That's supposed to mean. Most things are terrible. That's not the number one important thing. You're a food blogger, and you're saying the taste is important. Of course it is, but. Where exactly are you going with this? We have flips the menu to face me and starts pointing. The answer. Huh? Is Mikael money? That's right. The center of everything in the business world. Cold hard cash. We're a tyrant. No integrity. No dignity. Of course I have dignity. I have everything else. It's impossible. No, no. Hear me out. Contrary to failing business owners' beliefs, money is the most important part of everything you will do here. You can't have good customer service if you can't afford your employees. You can't make quality drinks if you can't afford to stock them. So none of the answers were right, which just made me look like a damn fool. Cool cool. And you currently can't keep a good menu if everything else is falling apart. You're actually making sense? Well, you currently look a... You certainly look a bit more happy about that. Trying. Sorry, I can't help it. Look at that. Anyway, the menu. If you fix up the menu to reflect what you actually want out of your cafe, you can determine your budget from there. Don't worry too much about the collateral. Since I'll be doing you a huge favor with my own investments. I have no idea what he's saying. Blah blah, I'm basically a triple A investment grade blah grade bond. But he seems excited about it. It's kinda nice. Place is a tax haven anyway, blah blah. Far more excited about this cafe than his blog anyway. This is good, right? That's why I laughed. He gives me the menu back before waving me off. I want to check out around the cafe and see what's salvageable. You fix that thing you call a menu. Sure, I can do that while you work on that thing you call a personality. If that broke, don't fix it. That's what my friend always says. You having friends. Well, colleague, you know how construction workers are. And I'm concerned for completely different reasons. Anyway, chop chop, you have lots of work to do. I'm sure the word he's looking for is we. Let Mikael wander and get to work on the menu. Sitting behind the front counter occasionally cleaning up. I wish Baba was here. It's kind of hard thinking of this place without her. Memories themselves are a type of magic. Developing me in a warmth and sense that aren't here. I hope she's doing alright. My stomach growls before I realize I've been going through ingredients and researching drinks for hours. Surprised Mikael didn't complain. Where is he anyway? I think I see no trace of him or his weird judgmental nitpicking. Just when I check next to me on the counter, I see his phone is still where he left it. Impressive. Maybe I'll do a quick tracing spell. The door bursts open before those dangerous thoughts get any further. Hello! What is with you and doors? Mikael yawns and leans back over the counter, dropping a brown bag. Grand people need grand entrances. Where have you been? Why, miss me? We didn't even bring my scooter inside this time. That is not an accomplishment. I'm far for the bait. I remember it's someone so obnoxious that you start questioning your life. No. Of course you wouldn't. More importantly, where have you been? Eating. You're here without me. Duh. What? You want me to feed you? As I travel over my lips, then back up. I do not like what it does to my heart rate. You guys nicely. He says this so sweetly that I almost miss that he's teasing me. That's not what I meant. Left without telling me, he didn't invite me. Okay, I'll just look at me confused. As, as ever before shrugging. Like you asked. It's just something polite people do. 
He frowns at that before muttering something and pushing the brown bag toward me. Fine. And have this. What's this? I gingerly unfurled the top of the bag and unleashed a familiar sweet scent of baked bread and hot meats. Whoa, did you get this from Miss Harbor? Miss what? Miss Harbor, the sandwich lady. She has a car to the beach sometimes, but they usually sell quickly. I guess. It's a long line. But I just paid someone to move to the front. Oh, I guess we could do that. Did your fellow like it? The presentation's nice too. Ooh, I forgot to take a picture. I ride his phone. Well, anyway, I'm surprised you were interested in such a place. Oh, some place not fancy. Miguel yeah, rolls his eyes and goes to sit down in a chair. I'm just scouting local businesses. I think all businesses should do. I guess, but they're my neighbors. I are them my competition. Neighbors. Yeah, the people who support the place. You know, friendly. Not ridiculous. Just eat the other sandwich before it gets cold. Thank you. He all smiles smugly at that, but I'd like to let it go on account of a free food. If you really want to thank me, give me my usual. You have a usual now. What? You can't. You know, a latte. Normally I assume he's mocking me. He looks genuinely upset. Haha. Uh -huh. What? Why are you laughing? Maybe it's petty, but I smell smugly in return. Oh, fuck you! Before we know it, dark shadows are creeping like webs under a table and over the walls. Hidwell purrs contently in her sleep nearby. Cute. Fishing yawn before looking over at Mikael. He scribbles in the margins of my grandma's ledger and calculates things on his phone. Hey, we should call it a day here. Mikael! Hmm? Oh, what time is it? Late. Aren't you tired? I guess. I can hardly keep his eyes open. You're finished in the morning. Oh, I'm done. I was just triple checking. Triple? In any case, you should go before it gets too dark. Are you staying nearby? Mm hmm. Mikael! Haha. -ha. I'm awake. Good work today. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, yeah, see ya. I close up shop fairly quickly. Find any customers and renovations. All you need to do is check the locks. I say to let Hannibal sleep in, resign myself to the lullabies of a gentle night in Lindsdale. It's funny, that night I dreamt of the spice of Baba's perfumes and the sweetness of her magic when it hits your tongue in a hot latte. But no Baba. That was a slow transition, Jesus. No way. You can't be serious. No way! You can't be serious! After yesterday's head start, I thought for sure Mikael and I were starting to see eye to eye. But, look at how I refuse to touch a mop or a broom. Let alone a hammer or floor scraper. What are you supposed to remodel if you're not helping? I'm helping, I'm telling you what to do. That's completely useless. It's not, for example, throw out those curtains. I guess in shock. We're not throwing out Baba's curtains. Oh, please. It's better off in the incinerator. Ow. Hannibal! Get that thing away from me. His name is Hannibal. And she doesn't like the way you're raising your voice. But. Ow. Come here, Hannibal. Come here, darling. Good kitty. That wasn't even loud. Not just the volume, but how you speak to people. What do you mean? Does he not know? Has no one ever told him how he comes off? I'll be up front, why not? Too blunt to people. You don't consider their feelings. Am I supposed to? Obviously, otherwise you'd be a jerk. But you are. I don't really get it. I'm gonna be dishonest if I'm not blunt. There's no rule saying you have to choose. So be mean to people. Try to figure your words from their point of view. Hmm. Bet you if I got through to him, but at least he's thinking about it. I'm ready to give up on him before Mikael gives an exaggerated sigh and scratches his head. How do I come off to you then? Arrogant. It's confident. Bossy. I have goals. Argumentative. Well, it's not like me to let people be wrong. And annoying. 
I'm not annoying. You're just obsessed with me. And here we go, struggling back to arrogant. I sigh. My shoulders droop as the reality of the situation creeps up on me. And unhelpful. You're never gonna get anything done if you don't want to get your hands dirty. You had to sign up for that. Actually, I think I can do this. But if you're that weak, just say so. I get it. He all seems to go through the seven stages of grief from my single steps. You. Have you know I used to be a star athlete in business school? I look like an unimpre- I look- I try to look as unimpressed as possible, nodding sympathetically. Right. Right, of course. You don't believe me. I shall can look away. I suppose every school has some sort of star. Okay, fine, I'll help. Over there, sure. Yeah, whatever. Let's get this over with. I'm not touching any bugs. Cobwebs. Or dust, actually. If I didn't know it would backfire on me, I would do a victory dance right in front of his face. Deal. Although the work for remodeling the cafe is as grueling as our arguments. You're going to have to give up on restocking whatever this cow chai thing is. No way! It's essential to one of our specialties. A specialty that usually puts you in negative because too much of it gets thrown out. Shelf life is horrid. It's the sacrifice I'm willing to make. That's what you said about the last drink. Be honest with me. It's all I... It's all I ever care about. Uh-huh. What are you so dramatic for? Do you even like your cool drinks? What? Of course I do. Which ones? The lemonade. Okay, fine. I like the cold drinks, but I've remained hot, so... At least pretend to like them if you're ordering ingredients. However, them are subpar. They may as well not even be on the menu. Learn to compromise for the customer. Hmm. Was for the good of the cafe. I struggle to remove old flooring and curtains. It's like I'm tearing away the memories themselves. Casting them aside for the future I'm increasingly uncertain about. The more, hours the more hours we spend tearing up, the less familiar and comforting it is. I can feel Baba's magic looking out. Replace with a cold emptiness. Hey. Hmm? Maybe I'll sit sits down his mop and lives against the wall, one hand rubbing over a knee. Is he hurt? Let's go eat. I'm looking at him, I'm not sure what he means. It's almost as if... Are you inviting me to go eat? He said it was a polite thing to do! I'm like, super polite. Besides, you know the place better than I do. I'm sure you have suggestions on what to eat. Get up a smile at him. I didn't know he would take my advice so seriously. He's pretty earnest when he wants to be. I'm going to take you someplace tomorrow. Your knee hurts, right? I'll get his food this time and bring it back. His head quickly retreats from where I had been massaging his knee. I'm fine, I was just stretching. Mm. If it hurts, really. Do you want me to take a look at it? No, I don't. Just drop it. Touch the subject. Okay. Go to the beach again. There's a burrito cart if Miss Harbour isn't there. Sure. I said to let Mikael's strange behavior go. It's none of my business. Oh my god! Hold on. Look at him! <laughs> this is little guy. Right. Here we go. I ordered for the both of us from Mr. Hanley's burrito stand. Enjoying the fresh smell of avocado. He smiles as he hands me one bag with both burritos securely wrapped, giving me a friendly nod. He says being recognized by the residents of Lindsdale, and and sure it makes me feel more at home, even without Baba around. Before I can open my wallet, Mikael moves in front of me. Here. Oh my, I can't possibly take this much money. Whoa. This is just like when he ordered all those drinks at Cafe Curiosities. That's all I have, just take it. But sir, if you feel guilty, then donate it somewhere or give it or give us some free burritos. If you insist, thank you. See you around, Iris. Good to have you back. I'm looking forward to the reopening. 
Yes, thank you. Mikael starts off from the stand as if he didn't just drop off an obscene amount of money and I hurry after him. Who knows to forget how rich this guy is? Then he drops it in my face like a brick. Maybe a sports car. Mikael is the first to sit when seeing when he. Oh, as he goes down. It smells weird. Why tell me you never had a burrito? Mikael smirks, leaning over dangerously close to my face before plucking the bag of food from my hand. Hey, be silly. And you say I'm judgmental. Yeah, you're right. Hmm? What's nice of you? With the extra tip thing. No, no. No. And here I thought he jumped to the opportunity of being called nice. Mikael didn't elaborate, taking out his burrito before handing me back the bag. He inspects it curiously, turning it over and taking out his phone and snapping a couple of pictures of the packaging. He opens it next, taking more photos of the burrito's insides, and then puts his phone away. The simple with the color scheme suits the beach, the wrapping seems to be eco-friendly. You can touch it by looking at it. Of course not, I touched it too. You laughed. So? Nothing. But you know, I think I get what you mean now. What the neighbors think. Hmm? Kinda nice to see businesses want to support each other. I mean, plenty do for mutually beneficial relationships, but it's different here. Like, it goes beyond it, I guess. Beyond the profit. Like, they care. As fellow people. Yes, that's exactly. That's another reason why I love Lindsale so much. It's... okay. Just okay. Yeah, only okay. I've been to better. Of course you have, rich boy. You know, money is nice, but it's not everything. Rich people aren't allowed to say that. I'm just saying that all the money in the world can't fix everything. But it can fix a lot. So when you have a lot, and you give some away, it doesn't mean anything. It has better use us out of your wallet. Otherwise, what's the point? For someone like me giving money away, it doesn't deserve praise. That's a level of self-awareness I didn't expect from Mikael. I just wish I knew why he looked so sad about it. Even so, it was your choice, and I liked it. Especially eating his burrito without further comment, staring up at the sky. But it's so peaceful that I found myself staring up too. We have fallen to a rhythm back at the shop, heckling everything with renewed vigor as the days and nights pass. Mikayo rolls up his sleeves as he sweats around the cafe. Maybe he actually was an athlete because those muscles are from nowhere. Not that I've been looking or anything. But I wish I could you could just use my magic to help speed things up. Gail stops off to the nurse's knee, although he thinks he's hiding it well while trying to check his phone. Hey, careful. Hmm? Gail rushes to my side to plug a nail gun away from the top of the pile of floorboards I was carrying. Oops, I didn't even notice. Jeez. Thanks for that. Gail helps me put down my load and wipes sweat from his forehead, hiding himself for a moment. I think you should take a break. I keep going. It's made of a stick, that's all. It's not only physical fatigue, it's mental. Just take a break. I can finish the floorboards. No way! No one needs a break with your, um... I what? If you look at pretending you're not being hypocritical. Your knee injury. It's not. It's not a big deal. I may not look, but I'm a strong guy. I know when to stop. Besides, I... Gail's phone hums to life and he sighs. Bubbling something before picking up his phone, Colin turning away. Hello, Father. Yes, yes, I know. A few more weeks. I know. Yes, sir, I understand. I won't let you down. This one beeps as he hangs up. He looks a bit stressed about the phone call. Is everything alright? Gail. Hmm? Yeah, of course. 
You sure do care about other people. I'm not supposed to. I didn't say it was a terrible thing. But he also was close and inspected my crystal and confused face. Can I help you? Careful. You should belong in the service industry. What is that supposed to mean? Your face, your mannerisms. You wouldn't survive in business. You belong here. Thanks. Mikhail hums before tilting my chin up toward him. Even through the sweat, he smells like puffed spice and those caramel lattes he loves so much. And the magic I often add. Weird. Personal space. Sorry. Midway through removing the last of the old flooring, Mikhail suggests repainting the place too. The work is grueling, he complains about everything, but it's not terrible. I groan as I practically collapsed from the bed immediately after coming home. I'm so tired. I don't know if I can keep up. We're the only employees, so the work is slow. I don't know why Mikael doesn't just hire people. But I guess I wouldn't really like that either. I wonder what Mikael thinks of magic. I wish I didn't have to hide it. I dream of a murder of friendly crows that night. And a tiny and tiny golden pebbles they keep putting in my palm. That cat of yours stepped in something. I put out the paint roller to look over to see Mikael cover cowering away from Hannibal. He swishes her tail at his feet. A trail of brownish paw prints behind her is also easy to spot. Hannibal, what are you doing over there? Mew. Well, if he didn't notice this magic being used, then they should be fine. I make a quick enchantment on the paint roller. Now let us air. About how much paint I put on it. It's little things. Come here, Hannibal. Who's here, Paws? She can hold my request for a moment, still staring at Mikael before wiping, whipping her head toward me. Mikael flinches, and I try my best not to laugh. I inspect Hannibal's paws and swallow a faint scent of sage. Bad girl, you know you shouldn't be in the supply closet. Don't even want to take the damage. Hey, Mikael. No way. Why didn't you say anything yet? I'm not checking the supply closet, you go check. Fine. Here, you keep painting them. It's a mistake. You gotta check to the roller. What am I supposed to... Oh. What is supposed to be a kind handoff to, to a wet object furling into Miguel's face. That was an accident. Accident. Let me just... What's the point of throwing it back? Sorry. Accident. You... I thought it was a horrible decision, but it doesn't stop me from grabbing the paint bucket. Your air is atrocious. Get back here. Not in your contract. Not in our contract. Gael, just a few of my aim is good. I'll be taking this out of our budget. We don't get much done that night, and it was a lot of paint. But it feels worth it. I yawned deeply as I entered the cafe. Hello, coffee curiosities. It's looking more and more like a real restaurant. I peek at the door to check if that Mikael isn't here yet before casting a small spell. I'm up working stuff with the floor as I hum and start making Mikael's favorite latte. The usual, huh? The sprinkle of magic is finished just how he likes. I throw a dollop of whipped cream on mine and mouth at it before the door chimes. Before the door chimes. Put the cleaning spell off with the whip of my finger and the mop leans against the table. Ugh. He massages his neck as he approaches the counter. Looking over the mug, waiting for him before taking it and sipping while he speaks. Thanks. What's with you? Not sleep well. No. These ugly Linsdale hotel beds are so weird. Is that really all? The pillows are smaller than you used to. I don't like sleeping places that'll feel safe. I feel like I'll be axed or poisoned. The room is so dark at night. Oh. Well, how about asking the staff for a nightlight or something? As I say it, I realize how ridiculous it sounds. A nightlight, really? Sure. Wait, huh? I'll ask. Let me guess. They have to accommodate me. Maybe I'll ask for better pillows or a new room, too. I'd certainly be way too embarrassed if I do something like that. I kind of like that you go for what you want. It's honest. That's how I was raised. 
But still, there's nothing brave about it. You're not brave at all. If I was brave, I won't do half the things I do. Like what? Let's speak for a moment before smirking and leaning his arms over the counter. What's got you so curious? Falling for me? Yes, yeah, straight over a cliff. I was got every mountain climbing and rock climbing. And you still can't manage to take a hike. He pauses and grabs his mug, dusting it off from the newly installed counter. If only your wit was for a cafe management and not for comebacks. Ouch. So, is there a hidden section in there? I almost spit out the coffee that wasn't even in my mouth. I yawn as I enter Cafe Coffee Curiosities, ready to call out to Hannibal until I see Mikael had already started. Except he's behind the counter. He's not alone. Hi, Iris. <laughs> Her smiling face as she sits on the counter is as much a distraction as Mikael in an apron, basically something that makes the warm scent of cinnamon float around the shop. But oh, is it welcome. Kiana, it's nice to see you. What are you doing here so early? I wanted to check up on you. But it seems you two are doing just fine. I didn't know Mikael was learning drinks too. Me neither. I'm right here. I know, not really. I just figured if we have a guest, I should give him something. That's what you said was important before, right? I remembered, yes. Hmm. Can I take a sip of a drink? It's missing something. Not surprise. You tried to write on a napkin the names of the ingredients I'm supposed to use, but it was the worst handwriting I've ever seen. Don't go drawings. Be nice, be nice. Right, nice. Then Mikael goes through his internal crisis. Kiana shoots him, shoots me a secret smile. Get the message loud and clear. Let's switch, Mikael. Can you check the door? Sure. He heads off to the door while I stealthily add a pitch of magic to Kiana's cuff. Thank you. Not awful, though, for a total newbie. He must be watching you. Hmm. Nothing wrong with the door. What are you two whispering about? I had to work making coffees for Mikael and I. It's an unexpected conversation could use on. Whispers, your accusations are not welcome. Whoa, Kiana. Huh? She means accusations. Uh, yes, accusations. Whatever, scoot over. Mikael hops up onto the counter next to Kiana and starts thumbing through his phone. What happened to that car of yours? Did you get it fixed? No. He's been using a scooter. A scooter? That sounds fun. I if you go really fast. I'm scared to ask. Relax. I never do anything illegal. You wanna go fast? I just buy out the street or change the speeding laws. It sounds don't bother. Mikael lives in a different world than us. Hand Mikael his cup while I finish up mine with a healthy dollop of whipped cream. Taking a long sip after. <sighs> Just right. I'd say I'm pretty well adjusted. He reaches over and swipes a finger over my part of the eye. That's not... <laughs> Chill. <laughs> Excuse me! Kiel okay, brings the whipped cream finger to his mouth. It's. Ugh. Yeah, can you add whipped cream to mine too? I feel like a bit dry. I'll stop by again later. Before I can stop her to or explain myself, Kiana runs out of the cafe, clumsily knocking into wood on the way out. What's her problem? I think she got the wrong idea. Wrong idea of what? He's helpless. The way you were touching me. Hmm? Cream thing? Get that's touching. Yes, I do! Mikael laughs and slides himself all the way around the counter until his legs are dangling toward me. He holds out his cuff and I reluctantly top it off with whipped cream. If you got flustered over something like that, you'd probably explode if I actually touched you. Oh, please. Somehow you don't strike me as the affectionate type. I think you don't know much about me at all. Please 
is as if I'd fall for this. I know enough. Just surface level. I think that's as deep as the pool goes. Whoa, when you say I'm rude. Whoops. Appreciate the honesty. Conversation trails off. But I really don't like how it ended. I really do want to know more. Not that I'm willing to admit it. So, we're pretty much. Pretty good. Never asked for anything before. Yikes, that was awful. Mikael thinks... If Mikael thinks it's awful, that's even mine. Takes a sip of his coffee and looks o me over. It's like we're pretty on everything. I I forgot over time it was an option. Oh really? That was sweet tooth. No, but... But... As the taste decides to take another sip of coffee instead of answering. Cream smearing over his nose. Ah. Uh -huh. I decided to pay back the favor and reach up. Where a finger seal in the cream. Would you grasp a hand, stop me before I could pull away? I just said I like whipped cream and you're trying to steal from me. Who no, stole from me first? Ever heard of slander and libel? Of course I. What in the fuck? Miguel takes the tip of my finger into his mouth. The heat of his tongue running up and down, sitting on the cream. I want to kill him. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. What? Hmm. Let's figure out unless we go. Tug tasting his lips. Told you. Let me watch. You explode. No, I was just surprised. Here you go, your sleeve. Yes, my surprise on my sleeve. Who eats food off people? Not like a stranger. The Vakali did try to poison me once. Huh? How could he say that so casually? Relax, I didn't drink it. Someone else did. Oh my god, were they okay? Probably. Gael. What? What's the big deal? Not like I was the one poisoned. People would pay money to see expressions. You would know, huh? I certainly would. Very funny. Mikael produces his wallet and takes out a golden coin. It's ready in the air before catching it. Hey, what? I'll put you to smile for the rest of the day. I can't tell if you're daring me or just being an asshole. He pauses to consider it. Jerk. I thought about it from your perspective. Mm hmm. I guess you think I'm rubbing in my wealth. Brilliant guess. Okay. Well, I'm being serious. Agree to smile for the rest of the day and it's yours. You can't just buy something like that. Sure I can. Are you saying it's not worth it? What I meant, it's just... Did I control something like that? But you smile around that guck of whatever person so easily. Kiana. And well, she's not a major fop. We have a pouch that the coin in the air again. Like a scolded child. I don't know where to start with him. The more makes you smile most. Magic, but I can't tell him that. Yeah, I can. Fuck off, of course I can. Be honest. I'll just be honest as I can. It's kind of a secret, I can't tell you. Can't or won't? Can't, it's private. What? Like it's dirty? No. Just kidding. It's fine. It's all our secrets. In any case, let's get to work. Right. He takes the rest of his coffee and hops off the counter, immediately groaning. Oh, you okay? He holds a shaky hand over his knee for a moment before straightening up. Yeah, I'm fine. Let's start. No way. He's okay. It's gone on long enough. And before we get into this backstory, I am going to end the episode here. So thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you later.